Hai semuanya, kembali lagi dengan saya Miss Ernitan dari My Piano Playing. Interview series hari ini kedatangan tamu yang spesial yaitu Lawrence Yi dan Midori Chiawi. Mereka adalah pasangan suami istri dan guru piano yang tinggal di Singapura. Video hari ini didukung oleh Octava Music School. Saya akan membagikan informasi mengenai Octava Music School nantinya dan Octava Music School akan mengadakan event yang sangat menarik yang dibuka untuk umum. Hi, Hello, how are you? Yeah, we are fine. Yeah, thank you. Doing great, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would like to ask you, uh, how did you start your musical journey? Okay. Oh, let me start first. Okay. okay. So yeah, I started my piano uh, lessons when I was nine years old, and then where my parents bring an old piano back home, then yeah, that's where we, I started to play. And after that, but uh, this journey is a bit interesting because I yeah. I didn't carry on like uh, most of the trials, carry on smoothly all the way through. Then I stopped actually the piano lessons from 11 years old. However, my musical journey is carry on with the, in the secondary school and the school band. Yeah, I'm fortunate to meet my one of my great mentor called Mr. Uh, his name is Mr. Lam Wing Chang. Yeah, he was the uh, principal tuba of Hong Kong Sifoniata. I have this great teacher inspired me a lot in this uh, trombone playing. Then I was uh, you know, with them, we, I win several prizes in trombone solo duets and band competitions. And yeah, it's all this journey deepened my, my passion in music. Uh, and fortunately, when I was 14 years old, then my, uh, my mom offered me to play whether I would like to join pianos again. Then that's where it kickstarts my my musical journey even deeper. So I was started with uh, another of my greatest inspiring teachers, uh, Miss Eva Lam, yeah, who really inspired me to become a music teacher. And then she introduced a lot of real classical repertoire to me. And then we I yeah again yeah. So these inspirations make me. Uh, go deeper into piano practice and learning music repertoire and winning some competition again. So this idea of becoming a musician become start to bloom in my brain. Yeah, before that as a traditional Hong Kong Chinese family and the elder sons, yeah, no one would encourage uh, the, the sons to become a musician. Yeah. So yeah, that was quite a difficult journey that I'd have to turn down an offer from this Hong Kong Baptist University. So who has offered me a place to study uh, high, high school level in yeah, equivalence to Indonesia high school levels, musical uh, curriculums. Yeah, but I have to turn down that in order to join uh, A-level triple science. So science is the year, you know, science is uh, something for the, for the guys, right? So, uh, so I do triple science in A-levels and then but in those few years, I also joined the, the band from my uh, Mr. Lam, they are the tuba players, yeah, tuba teachers, so who have started a wind orchestra called Hong Kong Young Musician Wind Orchestra. So I have been touring with them during my A-levels years uh, to, to Korea, Macau, yeah, around the Asia. And I, then from there, then I, I start to pick it up more and more deeper uh, musical exposure. Yeah, so also tour around as a musicians, young musicians. Yeah, so then I decided to pick up that after my A levels. Uh, and then after that, so yeah, with the, um, I mean, after that part, a lot of people ask me why I end up in Singapore. Yeah, because yeah, this is how a poor young musicians need to be yeah go for everywhere that is offered by the scholarships yeah so where the money goes then we will follow so yeah in Sing uh, fortunately in singapore they offer offer me a uh, partial scholarship at the same time in hong kong they got uh, my father's company offer another scholarships yeah to cover my tuitions yeah in singapore so I think of all these uh, financial uh, support, so I end up coming to uh, Singapore, NAFA. Yeah, instead of there are some other conservatory and university offer in China, Hong Kong, and elsewhere. So we, yeah, I selected Singapore. Okay. 
Did you come from musical family? I'm not actually, yeah. Uh, my parents are a uh, music lover, but they are not really well trained as a musicians. So we are the so-called uh, first generation family, a musical family. Why is that so? Because after I took the path as a musician, my brothers and sister follow this path. Yeah, now my brother is a lecturer in Hong Kong uh, USD, University of Science and Technology. Yeah, so over there, the music department, he was in charge there. Yeah, he was yeah, teaching there. As my sister was a uh, primary school, music school teacher, yeah, head of music over in Hong Kong. And now she's uh, in UK further and for other journeys of her life. <laughs> wow, so now three, uh, three of you are in music. Yeah, yeah surprisingly. <laughs> so it is the, the, the non-traditional elder sense uh, may be leading to a different path. <laughs> okay. uh, as for me, I started my musical journey, started from ballet uh, when I was two and a half years old. And one year later, I joined the Yamaha Music School um, uh, the JMC course at three and a half years old. That's where my uh, ear training started and it slowly developed to have uh, uh, this um, um, uh, perfect pitch. Yeah, and then I started to uh, like to compose, improvise, a simple music. And then later on when my mom started to realize that I have a, uh, a little bit of passion and really like music back then, and then she started to realize that maybe I should uh, improve my technique and that's when we started to find a, a more professional teacher to build up my technique and finally after a few years we uh, managed to find uh, a German trained pianist Miss Julinda Alinaga and uh, later on uh, we also uh, find Miss uh, Jenny uh, to improve the oral training and theory lesson as well. And then uh, after a few years of training under her, then I managed to um, uh, graduate and accepted in Nafa Academy of Fine Arts. And um, uh, back then, uh, managed to, uh, under the tutelage of uh, Miss Lin Trey Fang, I grow my passion more and uh, graduate uh, in a Bachelor of Degree. Octava Music School didirikan pada tahun 2009 oleh Isabella Leo Putra. Saat itu Octava Music School memiliki 40 murid dan sekarang telah tercatat lebih dari 350 murid yang memainkan berbagai macam alat musik. Kelas yang ditawarkan yaitu piano, vokal, gitar, biola, drum, dan kelas Little Mozart. Untuk menunjang kemajuan para murid, semua guru musik selalu mendapatkan training berkala. Ujian baik secara internal maupun sertifikasi ABRSM, konser, kompetisi, dan masterclass rutin diadakan agar murid selalu termotivasi untuk mengembangkan kemampuan bermusik mereka. Pada tanggal 3 September ini, Octava Music School mengadakan event yang menarik dan terbuka untuk umum, yaitu Jakarta Open Recital. Untuk informasi lebih lengkap, Anda dapat melihat di akun Instagram at Jakarta Open Recital. Terima kasih Octava Music School yang telah mendukung video hari ini. Lawrence and Midori a very interesting uh, guest because both of them and I myself came from a different city. So Midori and I uh, was born in Medan and then uh, Lawrence in Hong Kong and both of them now resides in Singapore and I'm in Jakarta. Okay, um, I want to know about the uh, music environment uh, oh. from uh, the cities that you came from. How was it? Uh, maybe Lawrence starts from uh, Hong Kong. How was yeah. it? Yeah. How was it, and how is it now? Okay. So, uh, to me, music is a uh, is a product. Yeah, uh, it's a kind of a culture on top of the economy. So that means it's like when the economic growth better, and the musical industry will go even better. So in Hong Kong, because it's, uh, it is a financial center in the Asia, so that's where the economy, uh, the, the fastest econo uh, uh, economic go growth over there. So the musical industry also is uh, booming pretty fast. Yeah? So and the exposure of the students in Hong Kong will be much more because of the 
the as a international hubs or the well-known musicians orchestra ballet opera house whatever those they will travel either transits there to elsewhere of the other sides of the world so that's why uh, for hong kong students they got a better exposure to uh, a very nice opportunity to expose to all these international uh, about medan yeah i think yes. it's to me sorry to in, say in medan uh, generally uh, the city is quite um, uh, so-called so laid back compared to Singapore and Hong Kong. So most of the serious learner, they have more financial budget to spend on the kids so that they can have a, a more professional training. So all the practical uh, theory and oral are in separate lessons. So yes. it is, yes, it's more rich in a sense. Yeah, so uh, we grow up to do, have a more better in musicianship, not only in our technical playing, yeah, so we can also compose some simple music and do some improvisation. Yeah. Okay, uh, can you tell us about uh, what music foundation should uh, a music student have? So, just now when we mentioned about the different cities, right? So, yeah, compare the cities, I think in Maidan, they actually provide one of, to me, I would say that it's one of the best all-round musician training <laughs> in Maidan, yeah. So over there, actually, I learned a lot from Midori about the, the foundational training because in Hong Kong, we are more focused in the practical playing yeah, and performances. Yeah, but in, I, from Midori, I understand in Medan culture, so there is all this uh, oral trainings and, and then also the rhythmic musicianships, a lot of good foundations lay off them. So then at the same time, then from there, then I'll be at our own curriculums according yeah and marry the the uh, all the better parts of both curriculum and systems and then into our own teaching methods so what is included in our teaching method is i think the most basic thing i just take out a few of them so firstly is the stable pulse pulsations yeah so we strongly encourage students to create a pulsate good foundation in the pulse through rhythmic exercises and metronomical practices and after that will be the oral skills the listen, listening skills yeah and then these listening skills including quite a fair bit of the idea of the pitch harmony and then the tempera of the instruments melody and the dynamics differences after that from through this oral external oral training we develop the inner singing inner hearing so uh, what, how do we go into that, maybe the solfege training, so that we can create the perfect pitches in, among the player, so then they can actually hear the music before you produce the, through the instrument. This idea uh, is actually learning from solfege learner, learning as well as my trombone experience, because when we play, we have to have the notes in our head before we actually play it out, so that it will be in tune right away to blow out from our mouth. So inner hearing is one of the very uh, important foundations for musical learner. After that, of course, music theory. Yeah, we need to do yeah the notations, the understanding. But sometimes when we look at the notations, a lot of st students think that it's just A B C, right? Yeah, C D E F G A B. But if we just know this as a um, uh, alphabet. We don't have sound in our head. So we come back to the previous idea about the inner hearing. You must have a sound for the for the C, yeah, and then so on. Then after that the th is the discipline. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, without the discipline's practices, all these trainings will become very slow in progress. Yeah, but we have to have a very disciplined uh, regular practice every day so that it will slowly become uh, part of your life then the pulse will be carried on without always depending on the metronomes yeah and after that there are some more it's like the sight reading skills and the uh, key relationship all of these through the regular practice will help yeah there's no myth yeah a lot of people think that music maybe is a it's a kind it's only for talented people but mm. i mean music for everybody it's for everyone yeah uh, besides those foundations, uh, I know that both of you have uh, students who uh, pursue their studies in uh, university. Yes. Do you have any um, special uh, 
training besides a regular lesson? Do you have any uh, requirements before, uh, or maybe preparation before they go to a uh, university? Mm. Yes. Uh, normally, for student which is going for overseas studies, we will plan for their audition program. Yeah, normally for audition program, it is good to have a different genre of uh, classical music, let's say from Baroque all the way to modern music. Uh, and it is good to have one uh, complete sonata. It depends on uh, the requirement from different universities. Yeah, but normally it will, it will be, uh, uh, have a good range. Yes. Yeah. So from there, they, they can show their different strength in different, uh, different genre of music. Yes, but of course we will uh, we will have to check as well uh, what is the strength and the weakness uh, from the student because every student comes from different background. Yes. Okay. Maybe uh, Lawrence might want to add something. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, to be honest, we uh, the most we do for those students who are entering the conservatory and university for music, yeah, is about the programming that we need to the Midari mentioned about the programming about the, the choice of repertoire to enter the university apart from that because our foundation trainings are quite uh, so-called complete so that's why we don't need to really specifically do an intensive course for them we just need to edit the, the repertoire to prepare them yeah, like so because of all the different uh, university, they emphasize on different things. Like if you're talking about uh, China, they are more looking into the the technical aspect. Mm. You may need to prepare more technical pieces for them, and then they would prefer Beethoven more than Mozart over them. Yeah, <laughs> and then if you're talking about uh, Europeans, time they will talk about more on the intimate. Uh, sensations like you may they may explore uh, apart from the technical aspects of the Chopin etudes all this you may, they may would like to hear more on the French music yeah or 20th century music so that to uh, to see how good is your musical expressions and different ideas yeah so this we need to uh, to specifically uh, cater to the students it depends on the university they want to apply yeah okay. so yeah this will be the parts that i think we need to spend some time apart from that all the foundation has been laid the most important is their passions yeah if they really keen on doing music as a musicians yeah or music teacher yeah so th i think this is the most important yeah to to get them inspired to go into the university rather than just thinking as um a career yeah because music we we is something that is uh like a uh, part of our life we need to live with it yeah rather than just yeah speak yeah uh, an idea to others it's very interesting uh, listening to how both of you are uh, telling us that you already laid uh, all the foundations and can you tell us uh, your typical uh, piano lesson so our uh, our lesson normally starts with um, uh, we actually we try to uh, make sure that all our students can experience that what we have and uh, when we were young. So um, as I came from uh, Medan, when we have an all rounded musical uh, training, so uh, this is how we design it. We start. Uh, we of course we start with a theory of music, then followed by oral training like rhythmic uh, uh, patterns, and then uh, sing solfege, and then followed by um, some hand sign singing uh, in solfege. And Kodali. yes, yeah. yes, yes, and then uh, sight reading, uh, and then uh, skills, technical studies, and four different genre of classical music. So then we, we talk about our standard classes will be for us our classes is one hour long. Yeah. So we only accept students at four years old and onwards. So yeah, we need to audition them. Most of them are quite okay when they can sit still and then listen yeah to at from four years old onwards. So we will like Midori saying about we will introduce them the rhythms, the exercise. Yeah. A lot of parents was wonder how to make a kid to sit down for an hour but uh, if you for us because we divide the lesson into different activities 
So that's why the student will be able to the concentration can last longer because through different activities so that they won't get bored and then start to move around. Yeah. So from rhythmic exercise, singing exercise, some finger te technique and then we do some uh, maybe fresh car studies and some repertoire playing. So the whole uh, one hour is actually quite a quite a content lesson. Yeah. So then this because for young kids they need to be occupied. Yeah, you need to keep them very occupied so that they this one whole hour will become actually quite fast for them. Yeah, most of our students will ask, "Oh, is that the end? I want some more." <laughs> oh, then that's usually then it's a sign it's for a the parents, sign. for the parents as well. Then they will finally realize because everyone was thinking about, "Oh, thirty minutes will be will do," but for us it's all one hour. Yeah, we because the, when you are asking about the the students going for universities or this, yeah, we need to have a very strong foundation from the very start. Yeah, yeah. so that's where we we design the course. Okay, mm. saya sudah uh, meminta mereka untuk memberikan kita sedikit uh, contoh uh, apa yang diajarkan uh, dari uh, musicianship di kelas mereka. Jadi uh, mungkin Lawrence atau Midori akan menunjukkan kepada kita ya. So we are going to start from rhythmic uh, patterns. Okay, before that we are going to uh, clap first. One, two, three, four. Two, three. like this but of course for the beginner it won't be as complicated as this all right so this is probably around um, uh, maybe after uh, chapter four or five from the rhythmic patterns yes the next one is melodic singing um, it's include uh, we will start from the soul and then you can see that the rhythms is uh, com uh, include quaver dotted crotchet semi quavers so the student must know the rhythm first before they know how to sing all this. Okay, maybe Lawrence can then demonstrate how to sing the music. Okay, okay. one, two, three, and go. So la la ti do. Okay, yeah. So actually for the melodic exercise, just now we were clapping and singing. Yeah, but the ultimate product actually is to do with the hand sign and singing. Yeah, so we can show you that because uh, before we show you, we can tell you why we eventually need to develop in there without the instruments. Yeah, because uh, it's related to what we have mentioned before about the inner hearing. Musicianship a lot counting on the inner hearing. That's also related why Beethoven created wonderful music when he was completely deaf. Yeah, can't hear anything physically, but music is still going on in their head. Yeah, this is one of the key points in musical training. Yeah, so we can show you what are uh, how these uh, hand signs is related into this eventually uh, training all the students to have a perfect pitch. So we will do the similar rhythmic patterns and the melodic uh, exercise. One, two, two three, three, four. four. So la ti do, so fa mi re do re, so mi do. Okay. <laughs> Uh, why we should uh, sing with hand sign? Yep. So for because the hand sign will show the hierarchy of the of the notes like do so. So the student will have the idea of how the, the notes move from do re mi fa so instead of a lot of students will say do so. Yeah, you know. So when when we have these hand sign, they will know that oh, they actually have five steps. So in their head, they build up the hierarchy of it. So then this we call the inner hearing. So be, when they look at the score, they see it the hierarchy. Okay, this is a fifth interval. So they will know that. Mm -hmm, yeah, in their heads before we actually play on it. So if this is a very important uh informations yeah for all the musical learners. 
Yeah, so we, we hope that our studios and our teachings can help other people to understand that then more and more music students will understand this background idea then, the, then they have a deeper understanding in music I learned something today <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, so both of you um, start a studio which is called uh, Artist Music Studio Can you tell us more about it? We have our philosophy about uh, a definition of artist. Artist, yeah, we define as a person who inspires others. So the others, it doesn't mean that it's a big group. It could be a small group. Yeah, two percent is also an artist. Three percent or ten, and then in the classroom setting to a community and even an international stage. So, uh, and we believe that every single one is an, uh, as an artist. So, we would also thought our students as our artists because we, through the teaching, they inspire us to be a better teachers. So, that's why we put this name, yeah, Artist Music Studios. We hope that we will become an inspiration yeah, for all all other musicians as teacher as well we actually we, i wouldn't say that we inspired other we will be mutual yeah inspirations yeah someone inspire us and we also inspire others at the same time yeah can you tell us about what's the criteria being a good music teacher it's not only piano teacher but any musical instrument yeah. mm -hmm. all right so for a good music teacher so as long as the teachers uh, this word in there yeah we will understand that we we must have a certain criteria to help others to improve yeah as a teacher it's just like uh, a hot water a hot pot we are using our warmth to increase the temperature for the others around us yeah, like a hot water and a, some cold water. So as a teacher, we are warm and then the student will slowly increase in temperature. Like that is an inspiration. So as teachers, we must have a good principles in life. Yeah, we must know what we are carrying in life to tell the students. Yeah, so the other one, we must be very passionate about life as well. Yeah, and then we must have loving character, must be very interested with other people's life, yeah, including the kids. And then, and also as a teachers, yeah, we must be an active learner. We must be keep learning. Yeah, we cannot be thought that we are giving the ideas to the other, but we need to keep learning, absorbing to become better, so that to keep up with the knowledge, yeah, in our lab, uh, in our world. And we must be a good communicator as well. Yeah, we cannot be just a good performer and then someone who is very good in executing the instruments, but we must be able to communicate and tell them what is the theory behind it and how to get them inspired. And we, of course, yeah, on top of this, we must have a very good knowledge on our own uh, professions like as a pianist we must be good in our instruments as well and la uh, this is one of the another important character we must be very patient yeah so yeah we when we become a parents we think we think that yeah we become a better teacher at the same time <laughs> yeah so there are a few more like uh, we must be also adaptive to the different learning styles. Every kids are unique. They have a born with a different character. We need to use something related to them. Yeah, I can if, I can ins uh, I can talk to a boy who loves transformer, and I turn transformer into musical explanations. Yeah, so when this happens, the student will be very much yeah uh, aware and in their own language on the subject. Yeah. And when also that we must be very approachable, because uh, when we have we have to be serious, but at the same time we must let the student feel that we are approachable. When they have challenge, they must be able to reach us to ask about the uh, the um, for help on their what they are facing the difficulties. 
Yeah, so I think these are the characters. We also uh, put these criteria to, to, in, to share with all our teachers in the studio. Yeah, hope that we, every one of us will, will also become a teaching artist yeah, to help other students. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Yeah. Okay, so we are coming to an end for, uh, mm. for our interview. Uh, I want to ask about uh, what's your current project and what's your future plan mm. for both of you? Yeah, for our current plans, I mean, yeah, we are always keep up to date and edit the, the, our teaching material. Yeah, like just now we mentioned about the rhythmic pa uh, patterns and melodic patterns. We have uh, already tied up the curriculums. However, we also will be keep editing that. Yeah, because this is really important to keep the knowledge up to date. And we are thinking about uh, publishing that. Yeah, maybe in a digital format. Yeah, and yeah, we have some plans to to do some kind of digital projects yeah we we don't disclose here yet yeah but we would like that the idea is we would like to go digital so that we have more people can use it and not only for students and to help teachers at the same time yeah so we so that we have to provide some good materials that easy accessible yeah then um, for everyone to help yeah and more that i think there are more things we are we are the next projects the future projects we are thinking about some things below four years old yeah whereas we now our curriculums all from four and beyond then we have uh, quite a lot of inquiry on students below four what are they going to do yeah so we are thinking about uh, creating musical appreciation courses to prepare them to the individual lessons yeah, this is uh, some projects we are working on. Yeah, for personal personal projects, we may, as mentioned, we are active learner. We would like to further study. Yeah, we we actually exploring some of the part time um, master, master degree. Master. Yeah, to to further our to to improve our own skills as well as knowledge. Yeah. Okay, I wish all the best uh, for your future project, and mm. thank you for. Uh, coming to our uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we would <laughs> like to thank Ernie as well yeah. to invite us yeah. for this interview. <laughs> uh, sekian interview kita hari ini. Sampai jumpa.